y'all, it's Sarah Beth here. Let's take a farm walk and see what's going on in the garden this week. So we've got our glorious sunflowers. This sunflower has just exploded with beautiful blooms. Magnificent. So a lot has changed since last time. And a lot of the plants are petering out and I've been replanting several different things. Of course, the zinnias are just looking beautiful like usual. Um, I have, last week I s directly sowed some lemon cucumbers in there and you can see I've got two of those little guys popping up. And then I've got some Chanteray, I don't know if y'all say it, melons. Looks like this guy is either broken or He's weeping from it being really hot. Looks like he might be snapped a little and that's okay. Still got one going there. And I actually started an experiment, which you can see the cucumber plant is just pretty much gone. I'm letting the um, last one on it fully mature and get yellow, because that's when you wanna collect seeds from it so I can collect the seed. So, Several days ago, I directly sewed, I did like this experiment, which I'll post the video for it for you guys in case you wanna do it. I literally got a bag of black, be black beans that I bought from the grocery store to see if it will work. And I sewed a bunch of them in here. And look at this, they're popping up. There's one here. This one's a regular green bean that I put in last week. And look at that, there's one here. And there's one over here. There's several of them. There's one over here. Just, you can see, barely popping up. And then there's some over here that I put under these Creole tomatoes. And they've popped up. And I don't remember putting this one directly in with the basil, but I guess I did. There's one popping up inside of that basil. And there's one over here. So that's super cool. If you get in a pinch and you need to plant some food, you can literally put beans from the store straight into the ground. Just make sure they sprout first with a moist paper towel. The sunflowers over here, like usual, are just ridiculously tall and just magnificent like usual. I have noticed that the yellow finches, I have three regular visitors here which I hear him right now, I don't know if you guys can hear him. They love these sunflowers just as much as I do. And um, they're actually yellow finches. They only feed on seeds, they don't eat bugs. So they've just been madly in love with these sunflowers. And I'm just happy to, to let them come in as long as they don't peck my tomatoes, which the tomatoes have seemed to be okay. I've gotten it under control for the most part. The um, beef steaks, they were plagued with a bunch of aphids this past week. And um, you can see, can you see like the dead little aphids on here? So I haven't had much new growth with these beef steaks and the fruits are getting larger. They're looking good. They are taking a longer time than I would have expected to ripen. I think for the most part now, I've got these army worms and fruit worms under control. I haven't seen any pretty much in a good while now on the tomatoes. I have seen some holes still, so there's probably one or two around, but I think I pretty much got them under control. Now I know what to do when to look for them um, and crush them. Usually it's best to find them at night and they like to hide in these zinnias. They like to come out when the birds are out because <laughs> the birds like them. So yeah, so I pretty much got that under control. These zinnias are just magnificent. This one just popped out this morning. So pretty. So the other day I transplanted a bunch of that basil that I had out in the back where the chamomile was because it was looking really yellow. And so I just kind of separated it and put it in between these tomatoes here. And then I put it over here too on each side of these little tires here that I put these cucumbers and these melons in. That just makes me super sad. <laughs> that makes me sad. That guy's probably not gonna make it, but oh, it's okay. I'll just have to put some more in here. 
the Creole tomatoes just have so much growth on them. Look how tall they've gotten. They're about four feet tall, this tallest one here. The one thing I've noticed about the Creoles is they do tend to have a lot of disease on the lower parts of the limbs. And I've just been pruning them off, but this plant just keeps making a bounce back. Like it literally just keeps growing and has tons of new shoots off of it. And you can see here, like it's got tons of more flowers on it and it's got m tons of baby fruit setting on it. So even though I'm not honestly in love with this tomato, I don't like the taste of it too much. I think it's really small. You know, you can see the largest one here is like this size and you can see it's been scalded by sun here, which that happens, it's been super hot. This is the largest they get. But I will say this can handle the heat and the crazy temperatures here in this day and it will still set fruit. This is interesting. It's like, this is a natural thing that a tomato does. It will, in stress, try to send off roots. So if you see any like this bumping on your tomato plants, it's because it's trying to set off roots there because it's probably under stress, which there's not much you can do about it. You could put shade cloth over it like a hat over those, but it's just a normal reaction that a tomato has to stress. So despite me not really liking this tomato variety very much, I think it's a really good thing to plant, especially in my area zone A here in the hollers and hills of Tennessee, because it is still thriving and it is still putting off food. So it's a definitely good plant to have as backup if you are not having food come through in your garden. The zucchini squash is looking pretty good getting big. I have noticed several squash bugs and eggs on there and I've just been picking them off regularly. I have noticed with this guy it's starting to get like these little yellow dots on the leaves which the cucumbers have it and so do my watermelons and my winter squash over there which are petering out which I'm probably gonna rip out this week and I might be a rebel and try to literally resow them all over again before the first frost, which I know I'm pushing it because I have like less than 70 days. You're like 80 to 95 day maturation, but I think I probably should get some fruit out of it. But these zucchinis have been setting off several flowers, no female flowers yet, just tons of male flowers. But I'm thinking here soon when the zucchini come on, it's gonna be coming on fast. The potatoes are still popping up. I haven't noticed any more come up in this area. So I don't know if maybe these ones just didn't come up, but there are several of them coming up, which is fine with me. That's free potatoes. You know, those are potatoes that I had from the store that had sprouted eyes and I literally just threw them in here. And the chives, they're doing really great since we harvested some last garden tour. So I'll probably keep harvesting these guys so they keep bunching out. They're looking pretty good got a beautiful yellow butterfly here on the pink zinnia. I don't know what kind of butterfly it is. Do you guys know? Lots of butterfly visitors to the garden every day. Hummingbirds and yellow finches. They just love hanging out in the garden. So the sad story about the squash. It's okay. It's You can see it's piddling out. And it does have a couple flowers on it this morning, which is quite interesting. I haven't seen any new fruit set on it, but I'm trying to get these fruits that are on it to mature and cure a little bit more before I pull these out and pull them off. You can see there's another flower that was on it this morning. Um, but yeah, it's not a sad story. I'll probably just be a rebel and harvest all these off and try to get some more winter squash in here before the first frost. Rosemary's doing good. So got to transplant that guy over by, I think probably by the cucumbers. They're coming over here to the watermelon patch. Um, I haven't had, I don't doesn't look like any more new watermelon set. It's really it's stressed out right now. It's got this bacterial disease called, correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm pronouncing it on anthrocos, anthrocros, I think is how you say it. And um, you can see, I had been pruning them out, you know, the ones that have the disease on it and spraying it, but it's still, you know, on it, coming on it, spreading up the vine. And at this point, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do much about it. I'm just gonna have to let it take its course. If it survives, it survives. If it doesn't, it doesn't. You can here see I have a couple more watermelons that are ready to be harvested. Got one, two, three, four on there. And there is a vine that has decided it kind of wants to go this way, 
which I'm just gonna let it go that way. I've been letting it go that way. It looks like there's one little tiny fruit over there set on it, but I don't know if it got pollinated. See if maybe letting this go this way is gonna like save it from the disease. I don't know, we'll see. Um, the silver line melons are fighting some type of bacterial thing. They've caught it from, I guess the cucumbers or the squash over on the other side of the zucchini. You can see it's got these little yellow um, dots on it, which I think come from like, there's these little beetles that are like yellow or orange or red and they have like these little black dots on them. So I think that's what transmits them. Um, but there are several fruits on these. A little small one right there and there's a really big one in there waiting for those to get ripe toby and i harvested the other little one that was on the other side yesterday and we ate it and it was absolutely delicious it tasted kind of kind of reminded me of like a honeydew but with a twist and you see there's one of those bugs right there i don't know what these are but these guys i'm gonna squash them guys brace yourself um are the guys that are causing and and spreading these little spots on plants so if you see those on your cucumbers your melons your zucchini um stuff like that you know that's what's spreading them um they've been all over but there are several fruits on these there's one under here they turn like yellow with like this beautiful bright yellow lines down them they're absolutely gorgeous the scarecrow is still dead over there <laughs> So we're gonna go walk on over to these tomatoes that I thought were completely dead over here. And I think you'll be fascinated that there are actually yellow flowers on it now. So y'all probably know I weeded this out, got in here, weeded it out, cause there was several really nice growth on it. I made several clippings from here, which I posted a video about how to clone a tomato plant successfully um, recently. And I made the clippings from these plants. Now look at this guys, this is crazy. This was a, I thought a goner, like these are like dead and they've been reborn. I've been praying about these tomatoes and God literally answered me. There's yellow flowers on here. That were, There was one of those yesterday, but now I notice now there are several yellow flowers. And the interesting thing about these tomatoes over here is I haven't cared for them at all. I've literally let them just go. I haven't watered them once. I've literally weeded them once. I haven't sprayed them with, it, with anything. And I have given up on staking them up. I've literally let them just pretty much crawl on the ground. And they're doing good. So we'll see if they bear fruit. That will be interesting. Sweet basil is looking pretty gorgeous over here. And these Amity raspberry bushes. There are several more flowers coming on. And there's little berries that are going to be coming on. So it'll be a couple more berries to harvest, which is super cool. I think after these flowers set and they set fruit, I'm gonna go on and prune this whole thing back and uh, maybe offer it some support. Callie, oh, Callie girl. Oh, Jules is not gonna be happy. Oh, I love Callie, but she's got so much anxiety. Oh, you know, it's really funny because my whole channel before I started gardening was devoted to dogs and animals and how to care for them naturally. And I'm all about natural remedies and essential oils and you know, lavender for anxiety for dogs and stuff like that. But sometimes, I'm just gonna be honest with you guys, sometimes there is no reason why a dog has anxiety. <laughs> She's treated great here, you know, it, she has the run of the farm. <laughs> Sometimes some dogs, they're just more predispositioned to it and it's because they just have a lot of energy. It's literally energy and motion that comes out like anxiety. You know, she's a puppy, so she's not sure, you know, about a lot of things. And so a lot of people sometimes think, what's wrong with my dog? You know, I'm doing all these things and I'm using essential oils and, you know, and she's in this training, but she still has got problems sometimes it just has to pan out and you it comes with age i learned that from chevy my my cow dog you know here who was the best dog i've ever had that usually dogs they're literally puppies till about four years of age 
So they're like your kids, you know, they're growing up and they're learning things and sometimes they just have anxiety about things and that's okay. And that reminds me what God teaches us in the Bible. You know, he teaches us not to have anxiety or worry, not to fret because today's troubles is enough of its own. So don't worry about tomorrow. You know, and we're human beings. Um, we have that capability of in our mind to lay it all at the cross and not fret about things to understand that it's a sin to fret but dogs they don't have that capability and so that's why god put them here for us to be stewards over the animals because we know better so i labeled this a garden walk today because it's not really like a tour I, we didn't harvest anything today so thank you for hanging out with me in my garden i will keep you updated and I'll post next week a garden tour and probably a harvest probably of these squash if you like this video give it a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't subscribed hit the notification bell here to receive my next notification when I post my next video update comment if you have questions till next time y'all be blessed bye